Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make a client and server Python program. In this one we're going to have the server hold information on different animals and on the client side we're going to have it connect up to the server to check if the server contains those animal names. So let's get started. I'll be using Python PyCharm for this project. I've removed main and I've created a client and server. You can create a new file just by right clicking and then selecting a Python file. So I've got the view set up where I've got the server on the left and the client on the right. I like to have split views when I'm working on these sort of things. It just makes it a bit easier. So let's get started. So in both programs, we need to set up both our import socket and our server IP and port number. So let's start off with in our uh, server side and we can copy and paste it into our client. So you want to do import socket and then you want to go down a couple lines, uh, server IP and port number. So in here, we now want to put in our server IP, IP equals 127.0.0.1. You can really put in any IP address you want for here. I'm just putting in this one. Server port equals 53. So we now have that. We can copy and paste that into client. And we now need to put up our ability to communicate between these two. So I'm just going to put in socket set up to for communications. And we're going to do server socket equals socket dot socket socket dot affinet and socket dot soc dgram. Now this allows for the communications over those IP and port numbers. And then we want to do uh, server socket dot bind and another bracket server IP comma server port. Um, and now you need to also set this up on the client side. So we're just going to copy the comment across and below it we're going to do client socket equals socket dot socket. Lots of socket. Uh, socket dot afnet and again socket dot dgram. Soc dgram. Okay, so we've now got our communication parts set up. Now let's work on adding in our animal dictionary. So we're going to add the animal dictionary in on our server side at the very top. So I'm just going to put in animal dictionary because this is what our server is going to do. It is going to have different names of animals and the client is then going to ask, oh, what's the names of these animals? So to set up a dictionary, you need to have a name for it. So ours is going to be called our animals equals squiggly brackets. And this is where you can put in the dictionary. So to set up a dictionary, you want to put in first uh, the name of that dictionary. So for example, we're going to have line. This is what the client will enter in to get that information. So I'm going to do line and then brackets. This is what's going to hold all the different names of our lions to give to the client. So let's do say Bruce, 25 years old, comma, Tony, 10 years old, comma, Michael, 12 years old. So See how in this client where, in this dictionary, I mean, sorry, where there's a comma in between the brackets, that's ignored in the dictionary because it's taking that as text. But where there's a comma here, that means that dictionary ends and then another one starts. So each set of brackets within, each set of quotations within those brackets are each a different file in the dictionary. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to add the rest of the animals and I'll come back. Uh, you can pause the video here to set up your dictionary with whatever information you're going to be using and we'll be back in a minute. Okay, so my dictionary is set up now. I've got a whole bunch of different animals, their names and their ages. So let's implement the server side to be able to uh, collect what the client enters and output the information from our dictionary. 
So an important step is to have a message that outputs on the server to say that the server is running. Uh, server running message. Let's do print our animal database is running dot dot dot. Now we need to create a while true loop that will continually run until a condition is met or for example if the client wants to end which we can implement after. So in our while true loop we first need to start off with collecting the data from the user. So what we're going to do is we're going to do data dash client address equals server socket dot receive from 1024. And then we want to name what this data is going to be. So we're going to call it animal equals data dot decode and dot strip, which just removes any unnecessary characters, make sure the information entered is correct. And then we will enter into our if loop. So if animal in our animals dot dot response equals dot join our animals animal. Now we want to be able to print out the response for and then print out their names as well. Okay, so we now want to create the message that's going to output to the server. So we're going to do print client sent request for comma animal. And then I'm going to print another one. Client sent message client sent animal names for client sent animal names response Oops. and then we're going to uh, encode this so we need to do server socket dot send to response dot encode comma client address. Now finally we need to have an else. So else this is going to be where the user hasn't entered a name that is in our dictionary. So for this we want to do server socket dot send to animal not found in our database dot encode dash client address and we seem to have one too many oh no we are right um yeah we do have one too many brackets here <laughs> so we now have that set up that is our entire setup for our server side. So we could possibly add in just a couple comments here. Uh, if loop for communicating animals to server, something like that. Um, but yeah, so that's our server side setup. So now we need to set up the client side. So we need to do another while true loop. Uh, first off, we need to get the user's input for the animal. So we're going to do animal equals input, enter an animal to find their names. I forgot to put in brackets. Okay, so enter the name. Now we're going to want to send this to the server. So we do client socket dot send to animal, oops, animal dot encode server server IP and the server port. Okay, so now we need to go collect the response that we will receive from the server from this request. 
So we want to do response client dot socket receive from one zero two four. So now we have uh, a way to collect the name of the animal on the client side. It then sends it to the server and we're now getting the setting up to get the response down here of the animal back to us. So with the response, we then want to be able to print it out to the client. So we want to do print the names for those animals in our database are and you get out of the quotations, comma, response, dot, decode. Okay, now we can come down onto a new line. So we've set up the conditions for collecting the animal and then printing the output. We now need to create a little loop to allow the user to continually ask this. This is especially important, for example, if the user has entered the name wrong and they get back the response that the name's wrong, they want to be able to continue communicating to get more answers. Or alternatively, if they want to stop, you need them to be able to like, stop running the program. So we're going to do choice equals input. Do you want to continue? And then we're going to tell them that we were collecting yes or no that way. So then let's do just a little if loop. So if choice lower, that means that if the user enters a capital letter or a lowercase letter, it will take it, uh, is not equal to Y, then we want to break. Now we can close out the program with client socket dot close. And we now have our client and server sides complete. So let's now run our two programs. So we need to start off by running our server. So if you come up here, you can select have current file and we're going to press run. So our server is running with no problem. We're going to click into our client one and then also press run. So let's split view this so that we've got our client all on the right and our server all on the left. So let's start off with entering an animal. Let's go lion. So on our server side, we can see client sent request for lion, client sent animal names. So we need to fix that there. And over here, names for those animals in our database are, and it's given us the correct names. So for now, we want to press no, we want to stop. We're also going to terminate the server side because we want to make a quick little change down here. We want to have this say server sent animal names because this is the message being printed to the server. So let's rerun these. So we have our server running again and our client. So let's enter elephant. We've gotten the names. And now we've got client sent request for elephant, server sent animal names are. So let's press yes, we want to continue and let's enter zebra. Yep. Now what happens if I enter emu in all capital letters? Did we plan for that? No. So if you wanted to put in a plan for that, we could come in here as well. So we need to stop both of these. To allow any sort of case, you can come over here to the server side and find the animal decode, which takes in the information of the animal input. And you can just add to the end of it dot lower. This allows the user to enter in any case and it just converts it to the lower case and collects from the dictionary. So if we rerun both of these, I can come over here and I can enter zebra. And we still get the information. Now, this can be both beneficial and harmful depending on what you're trying to make. If the case isn't important or case it's not case sensitive, uh, by all means put this in if it makes the program easier to run. But if you're building something where the case of a word is important, uh, then you've got to consider that that's not a good option. Also, for example, if you wanted to have spaces included, you might not use strip. 
So they're all different considerations you need to look into when you're building your server Python and client Python programs. Um, there's lots of different things you can do to, for manipulating the information that's inputted. Um, it's definitely something to look into when you're building your programs, but yeah, this is how to build just a simple server Python, client Python program, get them to connect together and collect information from a dictionary. So I really hope this tutorial has helped you. Um, and yeah, also before I go, uh, using PyCharm is also really helpful because there's a lot of little helpful tips that will pop up on words to tell you, oh, this is what it means. This is the reference. Um, you can do this in VS Code. I just find PyCharm is actually a lot more helpful when working with Python. But yeah, thank you for watching this tutorial.